So what we're looking at is the building from the southwest corner. The west side of the building is the western edge of the West Boulder Historic District. And what you can see at the end there is the red gable roof structure. That's the historic building built in 1897. And you can see the shed roof sticking up. That's the new remodel shed roof. We'll be talking about that. And then coming toward us is the yellow structure. That's yellow stucco covering a cinder block building that dates back to the 50s. Um, the old uh, cinder block structure, uh, what you see on the left side are four windows that's on the north side of the building and then as well uh, a garage door that was replaced with a panel of windows. Those are heat mirror windows that were installed by Peter McGill early on. That's really the beginning of the remodel process. We covered the cinder block with three inches of, stu of foam and then the stucco which is holding up rather well. Um, nobody in Boulder County understood why we wanted to do that. We had to hire someone out of Denver to do the work. Uh, what we end up with is the heat mass of the cinder block protected by the foam and then the stucco. Uh, it in basically makes a super insulated structure both for winter and summer. It performs quite well. Um, behind John's car with the roof rack, you'll see a black panel uh, on the wall. Uh, that basically you're actually looking at the cinder block that's painted black. And we, we actually filled the cinder block cavity with concrete and then we put a glass panel in there. That's a trombe wall. So that's part of, in a sense, part of the passive system. And the heat mirror windows also are uh, providing passive solar heating. Above the roof, you can see the solar panel array. So that's active solar heating. Those panels heat about 850 gallons of water in the basement. Uh, and right now, even though it's a little chilly out, uh, you're seeing uh, pretty much we're not paying for any heat. So whatever we're not getting through the passive system, we're actively collecting through the panels. And that heats the building uh, through hydronic floor heating. And as well, uh, what you can see here the choice of placement of the garage window uh, dimension uh, is specifically about the solstice condition. So winter solstice, summer solstice. In the winter solstice, the sun angle is about 15 degrees at 9 in the morning. And in the summer, what we don't want is heat coming into the building. So what we're doing is choosing the overhang uh, to work, work out with the parameters of the solstices uh, and we use that as well in the design of the overhang in the shed roof, which uh, performs remarkably well. Um, the shed roof has, as well, uh, windows on the south end, and again, very carefully designed position on the wall with the overhang. Um, those windows are a special type of window. They're a special order hard coat low E that maximizes solar gain. The two windows on either side of the French door give us uh, approximately 10% of the entire heating load of the building. They constitute a solar system in their own right. And uh, that relates, we had to actually describe that uh, to the uh, Bureau of Zoning Adjustment. It was actually quite difficult to get permission to do the shed roof. So we're here on the west end of the building outside. This is 3rd Street. And what we've done is we've worked to create a more interesting pedestrian streetscape. And uh, so we've pulled up some of the asphalt, put down some flagstone, and then created this walkway corridor here that I want to show you. What we did is fortify the structure of the existing historic building somewhat. And uh, actually, Peter did this. Um, we have basically piled field stone that the bricks were built on top of and uh, the cement that they used in 1897 is not up to snuff and was, had been uh, degraded over time. So we fortified the, the structural wall and then took the opportunity to create some thermal benefit as well and incorporated some gardening features as well in part of that process. So what we have is a walkway here uh, and to put in the Rose of Sharon, this is Rose of Sharon, which will flower 
in August and September when nothing else is flowering. And it's great for people. It's also great for the bees. We have some amazing pictures of that. Uh, there are some climbing roses that also provide fragrance. And what we did when we trenched for the trees and the irrigation is we also went down 18 inches with these blocks of stone that are 18 inches wide and 36 inches high. Half of them are underground. And behind the stone is two inches of foam. So what we have is a fortified foundation of the building itself, two inches of foam, and then this two inch plate of flagstone. What that does is it creates a substantial thermal break for the foundation wall. We have these Arctic winds coming from the west. So this is a very important place to protect in the winter. And then as well, uh, the stones warm up when the sun comes, even in the winter. We have a low angle of sun. It warms the stones. So it warms the garden bed for the plants, but it also stores some thermal mass and provides additional thermal benefits for the building envelope. And then once the rows of Sharon come in a little more, they can grow up to 12 feet tall. We'll have a, a living arbor of flowers in late summer. It's going to be beautiful.